So here we are at the Appalachian State University Nature Preserve. This is the entrance from the Greenwood parking lot. This is where you can find a sign with a map of the Nature Preserve. So if you have never been here and you don't know where to walk, this actually has a trail map on it. So we'll take the windmill loop and check for what's blooming in the woods. So right here at the entrance to the Nature Preserve, we actually have a couple of plants that people typically put in their gardens. So that is an indication that there used to be a homestead here at some point. And obviously the house is gone, but the plants are still here. So we have some apple trees, daffodils, and then we've got these periwinkle plants still blooming down here, those purple flowers. Those actually do not belong here. They're not native, but that's an indication that there used to be a house in this spot right here. Here we've got some of those early spring bloomers still up and blooming. This is round-leafed yellow violet. It comes up with its flowers first and the leaves later. Oh yeah, and we've got some insects flying around. There's another one of those violets and you can see this one is already putting up its leaves. So it's called round-leafed yellow violet for a reason. It's got these round leaves. Now they're on separate stalks than the flowers. That's one of the ways you can tell this particular violet. So these make these round leaves that actually stick around through the summer and they will become larger and larger over the course of the summer. And here we've got another one of those violets. This one has a white flower, so it's the sweet white violet. And yeah, they're all called violets, even though they're yellow or white. <laughs> and you know it's spring when the bluets start blooming. Look at these, one of my favorite little wildflowers. This plant is commonly known as running cedar, and it's actually not a cedar at all. <laughs> Common names can be confusing. This is actually a relative of the ferns. So if we look at these more closely, they have that branching pattern where each branch splits into two. So that's called dichotomous branching. And they make spores, just like ferns do. So these are very ancient lineage of vascular plants. They're in the lycophyte lineage. And look, this plant here still has last year's turbuli on it. That's the structure where they produce the spores. You can tell why this is called running cedar because it literally runs all the way up the hill. So it makes these long runners. This is just one plant and it continues all the way up the hillside. Now mixed in with some of these, we've got these little guys. The striped leaves right there, that is a plant called spotted wintergreen. 
It's in the Ericaceae family. That's the same family as rhododendrons, mountain laurels, and things like that. It's actually our smallest woody shrub. And here we've got a neat patch of rattlesnake plantain. This plant actually is an orchid. I guess it gets its name from the pattern on the leaves, which kind of resembles snakeskin. And these bloom later in July and August. First chickweed on this hike. This is another one of those common spring bloomers around here. And here we've got another yellow violet. This is called the halberd leaf yellow violet. You can see its flower and leaves are on the same stalk in contrast to the round leafed yellow violet where they were on separate stalks. And the leaf shape is quite different. So these leaves are a lot more pointed and elongated. Now here's a violet that actually has a violet flower. Got some chickweeds here. These are our native star chickweed. There's also an introduced non-native one that people brought over from Europe. These are actually our native ones. You can tell the native chickweed from the invasive one, mostly by the flower size. These have much bigger flowers. And then there's another yellow violet over there. So that's another one of those halberd leafed yellow violets. We've got some fiddleheads coming up. So these are ferns developing. Now this area of the nature preserve is one that botany professors have dubbed the invasive alley. Got lots of invasive plants growing here. You can tell these because they have already leafed out. They leaf out much earlier than the native plants. This stuff here is called autumn olive and has been the subject of a recent graduate student study and there's actually still a weather station up there that was part of the study. We've got some golden ragwort in bloom here. So this is a plant that has different basal leaves from the leaves that are on the stem. It has purple buds, but when it comes up with flowers, the flowers actually are yellow. These early flowers do attract their pollinators. Here we've got a little fly. We've got another invasive here, that's Japanese barberry. Not really a plant you want to see out in the nature preserve. In this area we've got the first mayapples coming up. 
those umbrella shaped plants. Those are May apples. The ones that only have one leaf, those won't flower. For the May apples that will bloom this year, the flower bud is actually right between the two leaves. There's some bellbirds coming up. Too early yet to tell which bellbird this is, but there's three different types growing here at the Datra Preserve. We've got the sessile leaf, the perfoliate leaf, and the large flowered bellwort. There's some wild geranium foliage. We haven't seen any flowers yet, but they're coming. We've got some trillium foliage coming up as well. This area has a lot of white flower trillium. And here we've got another invasive. This is Multiflora rose. You can tell a Multiflora rose by these eyelash-like extensions on the petioles. Now here we've got some nice fiddleheads on Christmas fern. And you can tell Christmas fern because it's one of those evergreen ferns that keeps its leaves through the winter. So those are the old leaves from last year. Now we often look for the showy flowers in the spring. Here's one that most people will miss. That is Pennsylvania sedge, just starting to bloom. So this is a more grass-like plant. It's one of the sedges. And they actually have both male and female flowers. That plant right there with the white flowers, that's cutleaf toothwort. That's another one of our earliest spring bloomers in these woods. This is another one of those lycophytes. They look almost like little baby conifer trees, but that's actually a club moss, which as you know, are not actually mosses. They're related to the ferns. Now there's another yellow violet, and this is the third species we're seeing today. This has more heart-shaped leaves, and if you look at it closely, it's got tiny little hairs on its stem and leaves. So this is the woodland yellow violet. So now we've seen the round-leafed yellow violet, the halberd-leafed yellow violet, and then the woodland yellow violet.